There you go. Okay. All right. All right, friends and neighbors. What we are here for is we're here to help you um, pass your technician license exam. Now, can you, um, Jerry, am I uh, screen sharing? You are. Yes, you are. Okay. Well, all right. The exam, uh, when you get to it, the exam will be composed of 35 different questions on a number of different issues. Um, everything from uh, rules and regs, operating procedures, um, and a lot of technical issues like radio wave characteristics, electrical principles, components, um, modulations, antennas, safety, that kind of thing. The uh, total question pool, there are a total of 412 questions, but you're only going to get 35 questions on your, um, on your exam. Of those 35 questions, you've got to get 26 right, okay, which is about 74%. And our, our point here for the next couple of weeks is to take you through this material to get you to a point where you're comfortable enough that uh, not only will you pass the test, but you'll pass the test with confidence. Okay. Um, there's a lot of things you can do in ham radio and the the big thing well let's let's go right to it <laughs> okay All right, uh, Mike, am I sharing? You are. You are. Okay. <laughs> All right. All right. Now I've told you about uh, who we are. Now the question is, um, there, well, let's let's go through a, a a little bit here. Amateur radio. The whole purpose of amateur radio, you know, it's a service set up by the FCC the Federal Communications Commission, the point of which is to advance the art and the science of radio. You know, a lot of the stuff that's going on in radio right now was um, originally discovered by hams. You know, hams were originally given um, different sections of the radio spectrum to play around with. The sections that were given were sections that the FCC or that the federal government at the time thought were not much use. And it turns out that as as people played around with uh, radio, all of a sudden they found out, oh, wait a minute, this whole section is very, very good for the FM band. And um, and there's another section of the, of the radio spectrum that's good for for um, video and television broadcasting. Um, a lot of that hams were playing with before uh, before commercial entities got into it. Um, the other reasons to having ham radios to promote development of emergency communications, to also have a great big pool of trained radio operators. And then lastly, and to a lesser extent, to promote international goodwill. That's just kind of a sideline of what comes out of it. Um, the uh, um, amateur radio, of course, there's a whole set of rules. Uh, it's uh, part of the uh, Code of Federal Regulations. It's part 97, and th and that's the uh, <laughs> the book of rules we go by. Um, the uh, FCC at this point is well let me show you
Hmm. <clears throat> okay. All right. I'm trying, I'm trying to bring something. Oh, there we go. All right. Um, am I sharing? No. Whoop. Okay. Am I sharing now? Yes, you are. <laughs> okay. We're talking about the Federal Communications Commission. The Federal Communications C Commission, it's a federal agency. Right now, it's run by someone named Jessica Rosenworcel. She's uh, a, a communications lawyer, actually, who was originally appointed to the position by uh, then-President uh, Barack Obama, then reappointed by then-President uh, Donald Trump, and then finally, appointed once again by uh, the current president joe biden so she's been in in position for a long time <clears throat> and she's the one that uh oh she's she's the head of that that whole body that uh let me get back to this All right, slideshow, from current slide. There. <laughs> okay, am I sharing, by the way? Yes, you are. Okay, all right. Um, okay, so we were talking about the FCC, headed by um, Jessica Rosenworcel, um, and that's the uh, that's the body that that uh, governs uh, amateur radio. Well, along with a lot of other stuff, but our big our big concern is with amateur radio. Where am I going? Oh, and what do hams do? There's a lot of different things you can do in ham radio. Um, of course, communicating with others is is the primary thing. But some people uh, get into amateur radio with a specific interest in actually building and experimenting in, with equipment. Uh, some get in and involve themselves with uh, radio competition. There are a lot of different uh, uh, contests that go on during the course of the year. And then um, also, in fact, in fact, many of you may be involved with some kind of community service like um, the community emergency response teams in your areas. Not only that, but then actually some of us just get into it, you know, just for, you know, general interest in electronics and uh, and things physics okay now the thing with am there are a bunch of different amateur or a bunch of different radio services some of which don't require a license uh, amateur radio specifically does but that's because we have fewer restrictions we have access to many many more frequencies uh, we also are allowed to use lots more power than, for instance, the family radio uh, service or GMRS or any of those things you don't need a, um, a license for. And we have more ways to communicate. You know, if you're on family radio service, you know, those I mean, essentially, you know, you can talk a very, very short distances, but that's about it. Whereas in amateur radio, 
you know, you, you can use voice, you can use digital modes, you can send pictures if you want, um, any number of things. But um, we also have some responsibilities. You know, we have a responsibility not to interfere with anyone else um, to the extent we can. Uh, we're also uh, limited as to things we can say on the radio and and, uh, and when and where we can use it. Um, so what, what you have to do to get your license course, you have to, you know, study the material and, uh, and take the exam. And that's, that's kind of what we're here to help you do is to, to pass that exam. Okay. All right. If you've uh, read through chapter one, uh, the thing about uh, chapter one, it's, it's a nice little introductory chapter. There's not a lot of meat in it really. Uh, but the, uh, the only question I think that comes out of chapter one that you could be asked is, uh, you know, what, um, what federal agency is responsible to um, regulate the amateur service? And that is the Federal Communications Commission. There are a bunch of other uh, organizations. There are even international organizations, the International uh, Radio Telephone Union. Um, but although there is some, there is some, some oh, interplay between uh, the FCC and those organizations, what the only thing that regulates us is the uh, is the FCC. Okay. Now, uh, Mike, if you are there, I am. Okay. Um, you know what I thought we'd do is just. Um, uh, would you like to uh, tell people why how you got into amateur radio? Sure. Well, and, um, and, and your specific area of interest. Yeah. Okay. So I I got into ham radio actually because of Warren CERT Community Emergency Response Team. Um, we uh, often communicate over a mile in distance, and there are no radios that'll let you do that. And when we're closing down you know, Van Dyke or, a, or or some road because of fireworks or because of some event that's going on. And we need to all close and or open those roads all at the same time. You know, the only real way to do that, we learned, you know, unless we're doing relay is, you know, with, with uh, amateur radio. And so several of us got our licenses and uh, for about eight years, I used my license about twice a year, and that's it. I didn't do any nets. I didn't talk to anybody else. It was just simply for Warren Cert. And then one day, uh, two or three years ago, I said, I should look into this a little deeper, and fell in love with the hobby. I love it a lot. Um, and my my one of my favorite things with the hobby is making antennas. When I saw that you can make an antenna out of a coat hanger that works, I went, come on. <laughs> so I did it and it worked. So I have made you know a bunch of antennas out of all kinds of different things just experimenting to find out what works best, what doesn't work, you know, what's cool and what's not, and, and just having fun with that. And uh, so I have uh, only one purchased antenna in my group of antennas that I own, and uh, it's currently not in use. Um, the antenna they use for uh, VHF and... Uh, um, you know, for two meter and 70 centimeter, I made, 
And for HF, I just put that one up. I put a fan dipole up. And that's, you know, those are the only antennas that I'm using are ones that I made. And they work great. I'm having fun. So, so that's me. Okay. Uh, Jerry? Okay. Uh, sorry, I don't have uh, any video right now, but uh, I will tell you a few things about myself. Uh, uh, first of all, I'm an old guy. And I've uh, been in the hobby for about 66 years. So I've uh, seen uh, just about uh, every kind of technology. And I'm also a, a sort of antiques and a history buff. And I've given lectures on that. And uh, uh, two things I'd like to uh, uh, make, make clear. Num number one, we're called amateurs because we're forced to be amateurs. We are not allowed by the FCC rules to uh, take any kind of remuneration, any kind of money for uh, what we do. Uh, so so uh, that, that's the amateur part. It's not uh, that uh, we don't do a professional quality jobs when uh, we, we do things. And uh, the second thing is uh, ham. Uh, I've been uh, fiddling around with uh, telegraph history. You know, the uh, Western Union type stuff, the uh, uh, telegraph operators that uh, were, were uh, coordinating all the railroad trains and all that sort of stuff. And most of them started off being a ham, which was a kid who would uh, sweep the floors, put coal in the stove, and uh, do odds and, uh, odd jobs and stuff so they could learn Morse code from the uh, telegraph operator. So that's, that's where uh, I think uh, the word ham comes from. Uh, not uh, ham-fisted the way the uh, the book says. <laughs> but uh, anyway, I, I started at 14. I uh, had to uh, pass a uh, code test or learn, learn the Morse code for uh, Boy Scout uh, first class designation. And once I did that, I, I wanted to keep it. So that, that was the uh, thing. Uh, nowadays, of course, you don't need to know the Morse code, although a lot of people do. And uh, as, as part of radio contests, radio sports, and all that sort of stuff, uh, that figures in uh, quite a bit. Uh, there are uh, a lot of things you can do. Uh, I, I pulled up something. Uh, if well, I'll, I'll have to uh, uh, diddle a little bit to uh, get it going if uh, Bob wants it. But uh, uh, in the uh, in the last uh, seven years, we've done two international space station contacts, which is uh, putting couple of aerials on top of uh, school buildings and having kids talk to the astronauts as the International Space, Space Station goes over the school. And uh, that's a uh, terrific STEM type of uh, project. And uh, well, the club itself has been uh, conducting classes uh, since, what, 1968, I think it is. And uh, my I started uh, teaching uh, classes uh, probably in the uh, 1980s. So anyway, that's the uh, kind of thing that I do. And, uh, right now, I was very fortunate to uh, have a friend uh, give me a uh, tower and uh, antenna set up as he was leaving town. And I now have that. And uh, practically anything I want to, anyone I want to talk to, I, I can contact right now with that uh, tower. Anyway, back to Bob. Okay. Now, um, let me ask you if if there are specific interests that uh, you have, you students, um, whether it's emergency communications, uh, uh, satellite communications, simply, you know, generally talking to others. Uh, yeah, what's the deal? <laughs> yeah, dr drone racing. <laughs> yeah. We, we, well, you know, either that a specific deal for that. Yeah. Yeah. There's um, uh, also uh, some drones uh, operate on um, radio frequencies that are amateur radio frequencies that you need uh, a license for. Not all, but some. And several years ago, there used to be um, more interest. There used to be people taking it because they were, you know, preppers, uh, you know, like uh, survival preppers, survivalists kind of things. 
but I, I just kind of wondered. Um, can I ask you, Jerry or Jeremy? Hello. Hey, so my name is Jeremy Hansen. Um, getting a ham or a technical license has been on my bucket list for about five years now. And so um, I originally started it because I, I am a prepper. So it's funny that you said that. Um, I, I work in um, IT for AAA Life, and uh, I have a lot of fun with that. But I know virtually nothing about radios. Um, this is just going to be a fun class, and it's um, I'm real excited to see what you guys uh, say and what I can learn. Okay. Mm -hmm. Oh, incidentally, uh, I get a, a publication on the internet called Off Grid Ham, which has a lot of uh, good advice for uh, uh, someone who wants to uh, really cut the cord. <clears throat> well, I'll try to get that uh, link to you uh, sometime well, during the the, uh, the sessions. Thank you. You know, the interesting thing is for people who are interested in, in commu uh, emergency communications or in, in prepper kind of things, your technician license gives you uh, access to the two meter band and the 440 band. The two meter band is uh, um, a local band and one that you'd probably be more interested in more than, you know, long distance bands. Um, Jeff, how about you? Hey, uh, so good evening, Bob, uh, Jeff Killian. Um, so I'm also uh, in IT and also work at AAA Life, um, surprisingly. Oh. Imagine that coincidence. Wow. But um, I'm uh, I'm primarily interested in just learning about this hobby. I've, I have a little bit of a technical background and some experience electronics and stuff. And I think uh, I got into it maybe about two years ago, just listening to some podcasts and you know, I've got a couple uh, handy talkies. I, I I think listening to CW has been kind of interesting. It's almost soothing hearing that stuff go by. But <laughs> you know, I think I just want to um, just want to learn more about it. Really looking to do something with technician and maybe general. Oh, excellent, excellent, uh, Christopher. How about yourself? Hey, yeah, my name's uh, Chris. Um, I uh, have a IT background, more computer networking, and now I'm starting to get more into uh, the IT security aspect. Um, but ham's been something that I've been interested in, wanted to learn uh, since I was a kid. Um, I just enjoy learning uh, anything new technology. Um, I think what really blew my mind was I saw a video uh, about a year ago of um, this guy who was using packet radio, basically just uh, two of those cheap handheld walkie-talkies, mm -hmm. um, and almost built like kind of like a uh, ad hoc computer network that was just communicating um, over two walkies using a computer sound card. I just thought that was uh, really cool. Like, hey, if there's ever like another 2003 where the whole Midwest uh, power goes out, like you've got a battery, you can at least use your radios and potentially communicate with somebody. Uh, it's Absolutely. not the fastest, but it's just cool to you know be aware of how it works. And since I already know a lot about uh, network infrastructure, it can be kind of something cool to add, uh, add to my arsenal. Very. And then, yeah, just the communication, other disaster uh, type scenarios, be good to know. And I just like tinkering with technology. Okay. Um, Terry? Welcome. How are you? I'm doing fine. How are you? Oh, good. Glad you made it in, Terry. Thank you, Mike. Oh. I, work, I work with Mike at CERT, so I'm trying to get my ham license. Oh, great. Great. Congratulations. Okay. Um, Mark, how about you? Uh, hi, Bob. Uh, nice to meet you and uh, the rest of you out there. Um, hoping you can hear me okay. Uh, um, I've been in uh, radio, well, I started back when I was a kid with a handheld walkie-talkies, the famous Radio Shack 5-watt walkie-talkie. Um, got into, uh, that was in the CB world, of course. Um, got into antennas and um, liked to talk skip, you know, listen to see how far I could get. Um, I got into, met more people and, you know, kind of got in a couple of clubs back in the days. Got away from that and come across a fellow uh, driver. I'm a professional truck driver by trade for the postal service and um, got really interested in um, how far he could talk with, you know, small wattage and stuff and how he communicated with others through the repeaters mm -hmm. and so on. And I just want to uh, get out there and you know, I'm going to meet some more people. I like to talk on the radio. Um, I really am not interested in the CB stuff other than, uh, traffic as I'm driving, but I would like to get on the, um, 
you know, the starter, you know, the technician license and um, I'm in the process of uh, looking at some uh, new ham rigs for mobile. Oh, okay. Yeah. And maybe I'll go from a mobile and put up an antenna and use it both as mobile and a home base, you know, to start out like that. Okay. Yep. And then uh, after I get the um, the technician class, then um, I'm looking forward to studying more and going to the general, so I have the more privileges, be able to talk on uh, you know the longer wavelengths and such. Perfect. So I'm very interested in it and excited to do it. Excellent, excellent. You know, it's kind of funny, but right now, um, if if we were talking about four years ago, <laughs> I would say, well, you know, your technician license it'll get your you know local communication but not much in in distance but but we're at a particular we're at an increasing part of the sunspot cycle where the 10 meter band and as technicians you will have uh, access some voice access to the 10 meter band and the 10 meter band has been increasing uh, in um, efficiency in, in communications efficiency for the last couple of years and will continue for the next couple of years. You know, the sunspot cycle, it's an 11 year cycle um, that's been, and at some parts of that cycle, when it's at its maximum, we, um, the, the bands are, are open and radio communications for long distances becomes very, very um, much easier <laughs> than at other times. Okay, Randall, how about yourself? Before you go on, um, Bob? Yeah. Mark, I just wanted to point out and point this out to everybody, but Mark mm -hmm. and somebody else said they might be interested in, in uh, general later too. Mm -hmm. I just wanted to, to point out, so I'm sure it'll get said through the class, but might as well just say it now while it's in my head. When you go to take the test, you'll come into the test room, you'll sit down, They'll take 15 bucks from you to take the test. They'll give you the test. While you wait, they'll grade the test. If you pass the test, they will then offer you the next level, general, to take at no extra charge. Wow. It'll be an extra 15 bucks. Um, you can take that test, and if you pass it, you're a general. And of course, if you pass it, then they'll hand you the test for the extra. Good luck. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> um, <laughs> but if you were to if you were to guess right enough, you could go all the way to extra on one set of fifteen bucks. So I just wanted to to throw that out there so everybody knew if you you know if you don't you know if you pass your technician test and you decide, to not take the general test, or if you take it and don't pass it, when you come back the next time to take the general, you got to pay another 15 bucks. Right. So I just wanted to, to throw that out there so it's in your head so that you know. Um, yeah, good to know. I, know I know several people that have passed both general and, or tech and general in the same sitting. So just throwing that out there for you. Oh, well, thank you very much. I appreciate that. In the, in the last uh, 13, 14 years that I've been uh, doing the exams, we have had, uh, oh, I'd, I'd say about uh, 15 or 20 people who uh, went from zero to extra class all in one session. Uh, oh. They had the uh, technical background, but uh, you, you just have to study up the rules. Yeah. Excellent. Okay. Um, yeah, Randall? Yep, um, my name is Randall. Hello, everyone. Hello. Um, I just um, decided to do these classes. I've, since I was a kid, I've always been interested in ham classes or ham radio. Sorry, mm -hmm. uh, never really had to, the, the means to do it uh, or the time for that matter. But finally, came to a stage in my life where I, I would like to further pursue this this new hobby. And obviously, taking this class is the first step. And hopefully we'll we'll see where it take where it takes me from here. So uh, I look forward to um joining the class and doing the class. Excellent, excellent. You know, I I did that same thing. I was interested in ham radio for a long time, but uh, uh, you know, I just 
it, it used to be that you had to pass a Morse code test. You don't anymore. Um, but um, that kind of kept me out of it, you know, and it, I think I just thought it was a little daunting. And so uh, I, I was interested in ham radio for many years. I finally got my license in uh, 2004 after they dropped the Morse code requirement. <laughs> so, okay. Uh, Christina, hello. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you fine. Okay, I do not have a very stable connection, so that's why the video is off. Um, oh, that's fine. So I got into this because Mike, I think at every single CERT event that we were at, that he was there, he kept saying, oh, why don't you get your license? Why don't you get your license? <laughs> so that's why I'm here. Okay. Because I think he's going to keep on bugging me until I do. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so it sounds like there's some benefits to it. Yeah. Are you in the same group with Mike? Yeah, and CERT. Okay. Okay, the Warren cert. Yep. Oh, okay. Oh, well, we got a good group uh, going this time. So, what, what is the Warren cert? What is that? Uh, that's the emergency Community Emergency Response, Response Team. Okay. Uh, Mike, do you want to do you want to tell them a little bit more about that? There's, sure. there's yeah, probably the, one uh, in his area too. Yeah, a a, a general cert team um, would take a bunch of courses through FEMA. They would be uh, um, trained in uh, Red Cross, you know, CPR and Red Cross training, uh, a lot of things like that. If the major, if the tornado or the the terrorist action or, you know, some major tragedy happens that taxes the local police and fire and first responders, they then would call in the CERT teams to assist them. Warren CERT is kind of special because um, Warren CERT, the Warren Police and Warren Fire use us almost weekly. Um, oh. If there's a power line that goes down in a storm or a car accident, a fire truck goes out there, checks out the situation, and that fire truck is out of service until DTE shows up which is someplace between an hour and four days. <laughs> what they do, what Warren does is when that fire truck is dispatched, dispatch also calls Warren CERT and dispatches us. And we go out there and meet the fire department. They check everything out because they have the equipment. We may do some knocking on doors to let people know, don't let your dog out. Um, you know, because the fences are electrified or, or, you know, we might just be, you know, with yellow tape roping off that area and just keeping people safe and away from that line. But as soon as they let us know what's going on, we put that fire truck back in service. We can't put out fires. They can. On the police side, um, if there's something that has caused the, the lights at an intersection to go out, and it's any intersection, we have, Warren Cert has uh, directed traffic at 12 mile and mound. If you've oh. ever been in that intersection, yes, we have done that intersection. I personally um, ran the uh, unit that ran that intersection. That was a lot of fun, let me tell you. Um, but the Warren police, you know, they don't really like directing traffic and no offense to them, but they're not good at it. <laughs> um, we do it a lot and we train really hard to make sure that all of our members are safe and watching each other and doing a really good job. So in Warren, if there's, you know, uh, traffic direction needed for something, road closures because of an accident or if there's a death in an accident and they need to close the road for the investigation, you know, we're called out to close that road off and, and divert traffic. You won't see cops doing it nine times out of 10. You'll see Warren Cert doing that. So we're very, very fortunate in Warren to be able to, to do those kind of things. Um, whereas other teams train, 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 and then wait and do nothing. You know, we're, we're very fortunate that we get to use our skills um, when the SWAT team wants to do some practicing. 
they call us and say, hey, we're going to we're going to go into this vacant building. We're in search. Would you like to play, you know, victim and or shooter? <laughs> you know, and we'll come in there and we'll help them out by, you know, being an, a being a bystander or being a, a, you know, a person, you know, in that in that scene so they can do their training with real people, um, you know, instead of cops. Um, so we were just real fortunate to do that. And so that's, that's a lot of what we do. We do a lot of training and we just, uh, we do things to help keep the people in the city of Warren safe. Okay. Uh, can, can I throw something in uh, to uh, Bob? Sure. Sure. Okay. Uh, yeah. My, Mike was uh, talking about a, uh, a town that has a, a very active program. Uh, Southfield also has uh, a program where they, uh, Sort sort of use uh, uh, some of their members as uh, uh, auxiliary police, but for those who do, are in towns that don't have a program like this, uh, there are countywide programs that's uh, called the Amateur Radio Public Service Corps, mm -hmm. and uh, they are also very active. As a matter of fact, later on when we're talking about uh, operating practices, uh, uh, it so happens that uh, the uh, ARPSC in Oakland County. Uh, has a uh, network uh, going at uh, eight o'clock on Thursdays, so uh, I'd like to just turn tune in and uh, let you listen to uh, how they uh, set things up. They're uh, very disciplined, and uh, you know you don't talk without the uh, control station uh, telling you. But uh, they get a lot of uh, stuff done, and I, I guess the uh, the when when I was uh, active in that program. Uh, they they think that it takes uh, possibly about two days after it hits the fan for the uh, United States government to get all of their resources uh, uh, set up and uh, in, in place. And during those two days, uh, the hams keep the uh, links going. Okay. Thank you. All right. Well, after that, you know what? Let's talk some ham radio stuff. Okay. Bob, did you get Christopher? Did Christopher? I'm sorry, did I get to say why he was here? Uh yeah, Christopher talked. Oh, okay. I'm yes. sorry. I, yes, I, yes. I, I, I I'm wasn't sure and just wanted to make sure oh, I don't man. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah, yeah. Talked already and I'll drop it in the chat. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh Bob, I'm I'm going to uh, shut down and uh, come back in. Okay, uh, fine. All right. Well, let's let's talk some ham radio stuff. All right. What we're going to talk about tonight, this is cool stuff. We're going to talk about radio waves and radio signals. Um, this essentially is chapter two. Well, not essentially. It is chapter two. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, first... Uh, let's let's um, improve our vocabulary a little bit. When we're talking about radio waves, there's some things uh, uh, we need to know. One is amplitude. Now, if you look at the diagram here, what we're showing here is we're showing what a radio wave looks like um, if it's hooked up to an oscilloscope. This is um, because it, it has a, an increasing voltage part a decreasing voltage part, it, and then it reverses to uh, an increase of a, or, or to a maximum decrease, to a maximum the other direction actually, and then and then back to a baseline. One cycle is a complete rise, a complete fall, and then back to the baseline. Uh, the height. The maximum height, that's referred to as the amplitude. It's, you know, the maximum voltage. Um, and it can be maximum in one direction or maximum in the other direction. Okay, that's amplitude. Frequency, now this is one cycle, one complete cycle is the rise, the fall to the complete other direction and then back up to the baseline. That's one cycle. And the number of cycles per second, the number of cycles per second is referred to as the frequency. Okay, pretty simple. 
frequency. When I was young, uh, uh, they used to refer to frequency in kilocycles or megacycles. Uh, that's old fashioned now. Now a frequency count is referred to in Hertz after um, a German scientist, Heinrich Hertz, who was big into electronics. Okay. So um, the period, normally the, the period of a cycle, we talk about number of cycles per second, not per minute or per hour, per second, because the cycles are very, very frequent, you know, thousands of cycles per second. Now, when you turn on your radio and you turn to a specific frequency and, and key your mic and broadcast, you're broadcasting on a particular frequency, however, which we will refer to as the fundamental frequency, the frequency you want to talk on. However, your, your uh, rig is at the same time that you're talking at, at a particular frequency, it's also sending out um, repeats. It's sending out at multiples of the frequency that you're that you're talking on. Uh, this, these are referred to as harmonics. Okay, so, you know, you want to talk on, say, uh, 146 megahertz, all right, 146 megahertz, but you will also be broadcasting with much, much lower power on several other different frequencies um, that you really don't want to. Uh, a good radio should be able to reject those, but uh, you need to know they're there and you need to guard against sending those out. Okay. Incidentally, Bob, uh, uh, we old timers refer to our children as harmonics. Yeah. That'll take the harmonics to their baseball practice. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, oh, so Jerry, you're back in. Did you go out and come yeah, back in? Yeah. Okay. Good man. Okay. Now, uh, yeah. So you key up your mic and you talk into your mic and what you're doing is you're sending out an electromagnetic wave and that electromagnetic wave, it's a, it's an energy that's composed of actually two fields, an electric field and a magnetic field. These two fields are at, um, are one will be horizontal, one will be vertical. So they will be, um, oh, damn, Jerry, I'm, I'm, I'm forgetting the word. They are perpendicular. Uh, yeah, they're perpendicular to each other. Perpendicular. Uh, yeah. Perpendicular. Yeah, well, yeah. They're at 90, 90 degrees to each other. Okay. Yeah, one of, one of the uh, things is way, way back in the 1860s, uh, the uh, early uh, scientists found that electricity and magnetism followed the same rules of physics so they were related in one way or another and then uh, later on it was found that a radio wave was actually composed of elect uh, electric waves and ma magnetic waves yeah. and it's the antenna that actually converts the uh, the flow of electricity into electromagnetic waves, and uh, you know, Henry Hertz was one of the uh, big guys in uh, his experiments in the eighteen nineties to uh, to figure that out. Okay, back to you, Bob. Yeah, and, and like Jerry said, what happens in your radio is you know you key up your mic and you talk into into the microphone of your radio. You're talking in audio waves. All right audio waves and then the um, electronics in your radio take takes those uh, those audio waves and converts them into um, electromagnetic waves which are then sent out to your antenna and it's the electromagnetic wave that's that's sent out into the atmosphere that some other antenna at some distance, picks up and then for the Inverted. receivers, those their equipment then turns that back into um, audio waves that you can listen to. 
Okay. Oh, wait a minute. And uh, yeah, that la that last part, the electromagnetic waves, the waves themselves travel at the speed of light. Yep. Okay. All right. And and all this, you know, takes place uh, in your antenna. Uh, oh, a signal from the transmitter can make electrons move uh, in Oh, make electrons in the antenna move right essentially what it, it's really moving the energy the the charge the waves oh okay and as i said it works in reverse also okay so those magnetic waves when they come upon another antenna that other antenna transmits that that electromagnetic wave down the feed line down the the coaxial cable to the receiver and the receiver, the electronics in the receiver, then turns that back into uh, audio uh, waves that you can understand. Okay, electromagnetic spectrum is divided into ranges of frequency that behave similarly. Yeah, when we're talking about electromagnetic waves, you know, uh, at the lower ends, we're talking about uh, radio waves. As you get higher and higher, um, you get into the range of X-rays, gamma rays. Uh, if you go high enough in the electromagnetic spectrum, you get to a point where you, what you're talking about is <laughs> no longer a radio wave, it's, you know, visible light. Okay. Now, but okay. Again, visible, light, visible light does follow the same rules as radio waves. Okay, now the spectrum. All right, now here's stuff I want you to start remembering. Now you see the, um, the very, very low frequencies, uh, like three kilohertz to, to 30 kilohertz. Oh, those are ranges that, that we can actually hear. Well, we can't, I don't think we can hear up to 30 kilohertz. Your dog probably can, but uh, three kilohertz, yeah, we can hear. Um, then uh, in these lower frequencies, there's a specific uses for them. When you get to the medium waves, uh, the medium frequencies, that's 300 kilohertz to three megahertz. Uh, that's referred to as medium wave. That's, that's where the AM broadcast band is. It's way down there. Uh, you know, what, what is it? Uh, WJR is, was that 760, 760 kilohertz? Uh, that's, that's in there. Then the short wave band, and here is where uh, a lot of uh, the uh, ham bands are in the three megahertz up to 30 megahertz. Now, in here, uh, you're going to have some. Well, if you learn Morse code, you, you can work in a bunch of frequencies in here. But for voice, uh, up near 28 megahertz, you will have some privileges uh, to communicate there. After 30 megahertz, you get into the VHF range, 30 megahertz to 300 megahertz, um, along with uh, the FM band being there. The other thing that's, that's there is the two meter band, which is... Uh, it's essentially 144 megahertz to 148 megahertz. That's the two meter band. It's for for technician level people. It's the most the most used band. And then above that, you get into ultra high frequency UHF. Uh, there's another ham band in this up at 430 megahertz, and uh, and you will have privileges in that band also. What I want you to remember, now all this, it's, it's super nice if you remember all of this, but what I especially want you to remember is the limits of the high frequency band, three megahertz to 30 megahertz, okay? That's high frequency, HF, three megahertz to 30 megahertz. Then as soon as you get to the limit of the uh, high frequency band, you get into VHF, very high frequency, that's 30 megahertz to 300 megahertz. You see it's it's changing by powers of 10 or by multiples of 10, three to 30, uh, 30 to 300, and then 300 
to three gigahertz, which is 3000 megahertz or three gigahertz. Um, there could be a question on the exam that's going to ask you, you know, what's the limit of the high frequency band? And you're going to have to know three megahertz to 30 megahertz. Or they can ask you, how about the VHF band? And that's 30 megahertz to 300 megahertz. Or they can ask you about the ultra high frequency, the UHF band. And that's three megahertz to three gigahertz. Except I think on the exam, I think it, it doesn't say three gigahertz. I think it says 3000 megahertz, which is the same thing. All right. So it's those three. Now the super high frequency, extra high frequency, and then the lower bands. It's nice if you know it, but there is no question on the exam that asks you that. There's the only questions you might be asked here is the HF band, three megahertz to 30, the VHF band, 30 megahertz to 300 megahertz, or the UHF band, 300 megahertz to three gigahertz or 3000 megahertz. Okay. Uh, oh, <laughs> yes, yes, okay. And uh, in, the, in those bands, it's like uh, the signals used in those bands are, are essentially the same there. And like you saw in some of those areas, there are commercial um, allocations. There are allocation, special parts of those bands allocated for commercial use. We need to stay out of those, okay? But, but in our bands, um, <laughs> There's a lot of real estate and a lot of things you can play with. Okay. Hey, hey Bob. So you were talking a little bit about like two meters. Like what's why do they what's the difference between like the two and the six and the ten meters and correlating that to frequencies? I know they're interchangeably, but like what's there's a there's a formula. It's frequency and wavelength formulas. Yeah. So uh, it's just the I, same. Yeah, the thing is, um, for instance, uh, yeah, the way you, the way you you translate between between wavelength and frequency is you take three hundred divided by the frequency will give you the approximate wavelength. Okay, so like uh, three hundred. Well, I, I think we get to that a little yes. later. But the thing is, uh, yeah. the speed of light is three hundred million meters per second. And that's why we that's that's where you get the three hundred as the as as a constant there <laughs> as a constant. So, okay. So if, and, if you if amateurs are saying like ten meters, is that is that just the the uh, a way to say the same thing, but in meters versus then hertz? Like it's yeah, it's just like a nomenclature. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, sir, yeah, 30, so like the 10 meter bands will, will run you from like uh, 28, 28 megahertz to up to near 30 megahertz. Again, it, it's approximate. So um, the six, six meters meter is band, yeah. uh, go ahead, six Jerry. Meters, it's the same. Yeah, six meters is the same. It's uh, uh, 50 megahertz, uh, and you uh, put that into uh, 300. That's uh, that gives you the six. Uh, I, if if you get you know, sometimes it's very approximate. When you get into two meters, uh, you know, the actual uh, ham frequency is 144 to 148, which is very close to 150. So 150 into 300 is two meters. Okay. You know, we'll get into that uh, at, at a later class, too. Uh, I, have one, I have one question when we're talking meters. Do you have to have a special length antenna, depending on which meters you're you're talking on or is that, i know cb you have to you have to really tune your your antennas is that the same in ham or does it not matter as much oh yeah, yes yes it, yeah. unfortunately it matters yeah yeah it has, I that the, the antenna way. has to resonate yeah because it, it, it makes a big difference in cb i know but i i didn't know if that was the same for ham yep. oh the, it's it's going to be uh, almost like a religion when you start uh, talking about antennas and tuning them and all that sort of stuff. But uh, we'll get you there. Yeah, let me let me just throw one more thing out there. Uh, the first question that was asked, I don't remember who asked it, but um, you know, when you and because I I'm not sure we we really 
answered your question because I thought what I heard is this. So let me try. When you when you do the math that they were talking about, you know, this divide by this and it gives you six. So that must be six meter. What they're talking about is when you measure that wavelength from one end of it to the other, he showed you that wavelength before going from one end to the other, one wave in the two meter band, it's roughly, you put a tape measure out, it's two meters long. In the six meter band, that wave is six meters long. Okay. And so each band that we use <clears throat> is broken out in that way um, you know, just, I, I think it's broken out in that way just because it's very helpful to us to know when I'm tuning my antenna, you know, that, that wavelength, I need to know it's about six meters. And, and that six meters is, is, is the band. So that's like, if I'm reading this right, like 50 megahertz to 54. Yes. So that's like a full, you can work in, in anywhere in between that. 52, 53, anywhere right. in that on the six meters. Yeah. We, we have certain that's to say like uh that's to say like one cycle takes two meters to complete a full cycle, correct? Well one one cycle measured in length, if you froze that one cycle in time, so you have that one bump going up and down and back up again. From one edge to the other, put a tape measure on it. How long is it? That's two meter, six meter, 70 centimeter, 20 meter. So so we're talking the, the horizontal length, not the peak and the low? Correct. Right. It's interesting. I, was, I, I had that backwards. Thank you. Okay. Hey, uh, one, one thing we should point out, uh, when you're Looking through your uh, manual, uh, you're going to see uh, some uh, stuff in parentheses and bold. At the end of the book, at the end of the manual, you have the full list of questions in the uh, in the question pool, and uh, that ref those references in the text refer to the questions. And uh, that, that's going to be kind of important uh, to you uh, la later on, if, especially if you're uh, going to uh, go online and uh, take practice tests, since the uh, American Radio Relay League has a, uh, has a website, especially for that. And it will, uh, you no, know, if you, if you uh, get something right or get something wrong, it will refer you to the question. So you can look it up in, uh, in the question pool or look it up in the text. So it's it's all pretty well organized. Okay, and the the overall formula is is simply this: three hundred divided by the frequency that will give you the approximate wavelength in meters. You can also do it the other way. You can do three hundred divided by the wavelength, and that will give you the approximate frequency of that of that electromagnetic wave. Okay. Now, and again, remember that the three things that I want you to remember here are the 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 uh, HF, the the uh, limits of the HF band, the VHF band, and the UHF band. Okay, three megahertz to thirty megahertz for the UHF band, thirty megahertz to three hundred megahertz for the VHF band, and then the UHF band again. 300 megahertz to three gigahertz or 3000 megahertz. You know, if you remember one, if you remember just one of them, you can you can figure out the other two because again, you're just doing times 10 to get your range. And as soon as one range stops, the next one starts, okay? So, all right, let's go back to All right. Now, the uh, other thing we need to get is that um, 
when you're sending out that, uh, you know, when you're talking into your mic and sending out that radio wave, it takes up a certain amount of space on the, uh, it, take, it, take, it takes up a certain amount of frequency, all right? It takes a range of frequency, a small range of frequencies. And if you're not turned right to, the, if you're not tuned to the exact frequency, um, you may still hear the communication. You may still hear the the talk or whatever, but it won't be as it won't be as clear. All right. So, um, and then if you if you're too far off the the broadcast frequency, you're not going to hear it at all. Okay. Wavelength. Yes. <laughs> okay. All right. Yes. Wavelength. Uh, we're talking about distance. Uh, the distance, the distance over time, okay? Um, and I think we pretty much covered that already. Oh, and that is that. Now, there is one part. Oh, wait a minute, I got to stop sharing. Let me try this again. There is... Yes. All right. Now, for your technician exam, there's really not a lot of math. There's, in fact, uh, really no math. But there, you've got to get used to um, the nomenclature for um, for the frequency numbers. Um, because when we're talking about frequency, we're talking about cycles per second and there's you know this isn't a matter of two or three cycles per second this is a matter of thousands of cycles per second and the way we talk about those is we talk about those using uh, uh the metric system uh you probably if you've read chapter two you've seen this in your book there's all kinds of uh, um, metric prefixes you know but the uh, the six important ones I want you to remember are giga, as in gigahertz, mega, as in megahertz, kilo, as in kilohertz, and then on the other side, uh, milla, as in millimeters, uh, micro, uh, as in, oh, micro, I don't know, oh, the milla, the uh, thousands, that could be, uh, milliamps milliamps or millivolts micro could be microfarads or microhenries and nano those are the six that you really should remember and you should know how to get from one to the other because there are a series of questions they can ask you okay so oh let's start here if you have this thing like hertz and say we have oh let's go back to your high school math. You remember the, the big numbers, there's hundreds. The next group of three zeros is thousands. The next group is millions. And then you get up to trillions. And in when you're talking about Hertz, we can be talking about some fairly, fairly big, big numbers. And so it's easier to talk about it instead of Hertz. In It's easier to talk about it in kilohertz or megahertz. Okay. So, I mean, It'd be kind of cumbersome to talk about 23 and a half trillion hertz. You know, that that's kind of hard to deal with. So, and even talking about kilohertz, divided by a thousand, okay, meaning you move your decimal point three, uh, you know, three spaces to the left. Um, even talking about 23 and a half million kilohertz, uh, that's also pretty cumbersome. But to megahertz, <laughs> you still got a big number. It's still 23 and a half thousand megahertz, which is at least easier to deal with than 23 and a half trillion. And then gigahertz, uh, 23 and a half gigahertz. Uh, again, do you do you see what's going on here? How you how you just simply moving your decimal point? 
essentially what you're doing you're to, um, to divide by a thousand you're going to move the decimal point three zeros to the uh to the left okay and and you can go back the other way also okay oh now tell you what what how are we doing on time oh, we're getting let's try this let me stop sharing here ah uh. All right. Now, one of the things I, I would like to do kind of at this point is kind of run through some of the stuff we've been through, but I'd like to run through it in the form of the questions that you may be asked on this chapter. Okay. Now, we've talked about frequency. What is the unit of frequency? Okay, the unit of frequency is a Hertz. Remember, we said years ago, it used to be referred to as cycles per second. Now it's referred to as Hertz. Okay, what describes the number of times per second that an alternating current makes one complete cycle? Uh, that's frequency. Right? Um, and what's the abbreviation for megahertz? The abbreviation for megahertz is capital M, capital H, small z. All right, what's the abbreviation for kilohertz? That's it's lowercase k, capital Z, uh, capital H, sorry, and small z. Okay, now here's the questions uh, that you can, that they can ask you as we were talking about. What's the frequency range referred to as VHF? Okay, do you remember this? No. Yeah. Okay, VHF. 30 megahertz to 300 megahertz. Okay. And what's the frequency range referred to as UHF? Okay, you remember that's 300 megahertz. VHF stops at 300 megahertz, so you know. Um, and, and we're talking about megahertz here. So any, any um, response here that's in kilohertz, you know, is wrong. All right, you can throw those out automatically. But in this one, where the question is, what's the frequency range referred to as UHF? Well, since you know VHF stops at three, 300 megahertz, you know UHF has got to start at 300 megahertz, and it goes 300 megahertz times 10, or 3,000 megahertz. Uh, on that other slide, and I think your, your textbook refers to it also as three gigahertz, but three gigahertz is the same as 3000 megahertz. Okay, and what's the frequency range refer that's referred to as high frequency or HF? Okay, and you know, up here where we said that VHF starts at 30 megahertz and HF is below that, you know that the 30 megahertz that VHF starts at has to be the upper limit the stop point for hf so and then you just divide that by 10 
So it's 3 megahertz to 30 megahertz. Oh, they could ask you this question. What does the abbreviation RF mean? And you hope they ask that question. It's the easiest thing. I don't think we've actually mentioned it, but that just means radio frequency of any type, any type. Okay. Then what is the velocity of a radio wave through free space? And we told you that that's the speed of light. The speed of light is 300 million meters per second. Uh, in high school, we probably learned it as 186,000 miles per second. Same thing. Um, and then what is the relationship between wavelength and frequency? Oh, we didn't talk about this. Oh, but you need to know this. Do you know, um, as wavelength decreases as the wavelength gets shorter yes the, fre yes. the frequency increases okay as the wavelength gets shorter frequency increases as wavelength gets longer frequency decreases oh and let me give you a couple of examples the 80 meter a, a, a wavelength of 80 meters would have a frequency of about uh three megahertz okay 80 meters three megahertz uh the uh, 40 meter wavelength would have a, a frequency of about a, a bit over 7,000 uh megahertz okay the 10 meter band and the 10 meter band you should get to know and love because you have phone privileges in the 10 meter band. The 10 meter band, um, so uh, you, you know, you've got a wavelength of 10 meters, a, a bit over 30 feet. That has a wavelength of around, um, well, the actual band starts at 28 megahertz, but it goes up to near 30 megahertz. The six meter band, you get to six meters, that's only an about an 18 or 19 foot wavelength that has a frequency of 50 megahertz and then up in the two meter band and that two meters uh, you know a meter being about 39 inches two meters is a, a bit over six feet uh so uh, uh, about a six and a half foot wavelength is going to have a frequency of n almost 150 megahertz okay so as frequency uh gets shorter i'm sorry as wavelength gets shorter frequency increases okay yes. two and, meters 144 i'm sorry go ahead go ahead jerry two meters one two meters 144 148 uh one and a quarter meters is 220 megahertz Okay. <clears throat> okay, and we we told you about um, converting um, frequency into megahertz, and that is, you take three hundred and you divide it by the frequency in megahertz, and that will give you the approximate wavelength. So, say, um, let's deal with uh, uh, the six meter band. Okay, the um, Converting frequency to okay, so you take 50 megahertz, divide it into 300, and that gives you a wavelength of about six meters. Okay. Oh, and oh, and <laughs> oh, and one of you asked this question before, and and here, <laughs> here, and this question may appear on your exam. Okay, in addition to frequency, which of the following is used to identify amateur radio bands? You can refer to the amateur radio bands either in frequency or in approximate wavelength. Okay, so you can refer to the six meter band, the six meter band, or the 50 megahertz band. It's the same thing, just different words. Okay. 
And then, oh, and they can ask you this, but you should know this. You should know this cold. What is the approximate velocity of a radio wave in free space? And that's 300 million meters per second, okay? In amateur radio, you know, we don't use, uh, uh, we don't use the British system very much. All right, it's, it's, it's all metric systems. So when you look at this, at this question, and, and these are the responses that, that you'll have to choose from. Um, anytime they, they start talking about miles per hour, forget it because you know we're talking about meters and with the speed of light you know you would not <laughs> the speed of light per hour um no they deal with that in meters per second okay so it's 300 million meters per second oh and then what is the transceiver oh i didn't i didn't cover this you know we talk about radios and uh receivers and transmitters but you know it, Back when I was a kid, if you were in ham radio, you had one box on your desk that was your transmitter and another box that you had a re that was your receiver. So you talked into one box and listened out of the other box. And, and that's all. No one does that anymore. It's, it's all the same box. It's all the same radio. And it's referred to as a transceiver. OK, so a transceiver is just a device that combines a receiver and a transmitter into one piece of equipment. Okay. Well, that pretty much takes us through chapter two. Okay. Now, I tell you what, that is really all I had planned to cover for tonight. So I think we're going to get out a little bit early. Um, next week, we're going to head off into Chapter 3. Chapter 3 gets meatier. Um, it's, it's also very, very interesting stuff. Chapter 3, Jerry is going to be doing. And Chapter 3 is kind of electric electrical principles um and it's it's just cool stuff um you'll have to remember back to your your high school chemistry and high school physics if you know um a little bit for that but it's it's cool stuff so uh, do we have any questions um i have one bob this mark yeah mark um uh, you keep referring to the the book you guys are reading and stuff and going out of. Is that something that you got right off of the uh, ARRL website? Because I, I went on and, uh, yeah, that's okay. Oh, See, both of okay, them. I'd actually <laughs> ordered that book the second time. This one here I have is the same one. It's, I just got it the other day, but this says questions and answers. Oh, the Q&A. Great. That's, yeah. that's a yeah, total... Great. Yeah, Perfect. but the only thing about it I don't like about this that I know I got the wrong ones. This gives you the answer and stuff, but it doesn't give you the explanation on how it works. It doesn't give you the graph, you know, to figure out wavelength, you know, you know, yeah. how to figure that out and the formula for it. It doesn't spell out that kind of stuff in this book. This one, if anybody's looking at it, it's just a it gives you all the questions and answers gives you a brief description, but it does not explain how each thing works, how yeah. you find right. a wavelength or, you know, the speed of light, which we know, you know, now. So um, I was just wondering what that book was. So I have that, I should get it here tomorrow. I ordered it from Amazon. So, okay, let me, uh, I got it right the second time. Good man, <laughs> yeah, let me, good man. Let me but now I have else. both. I can test myself again with this one. <laughs> There you go. Let me throw something else out there for those that don't have the book and are going to get the book. Be very careful because, um, you know, if you go to the ARRL.com site, they're not going to offer you anything except for this current one. And at the bottom here where I'm pointing, you can't read that, I'm sure. But what it says is, for use with exams 
taken between July 1st, 2022 and July 30th, 2026? Yes, they change the questions. So you might go to Google and try to find a book and you might find a really good, hey, this book's only five bucks. <laughs> yes. <laughs> it's probably expired. Pay very close attention to the date on the book or you'll just mess yourself up. The, the information in the book is going to be the same, but the questions are what are going to be different. So it's not that, you know, it's not that things are, are we've learned things and, and that much has changed. The information would still be good. Just the questions aren't going to be the same. Okay. So, so just well, be very careful of that book, when, you, no when, you, when you buy your book. Right. I got gotcha. you. Well, yeah. Mike, uh, the, the fashions have uh, changed in certain ways. So uh, uh, there are certain techniques of communication te uh, techniques that uh, uh, we were using uh five, six years ago, which are uh, sort of superseded. Uh, yeah, that's probably true, Jerry. You're right. Uh, you know, little things like that, but uh, probably not enough to uh, cost you, uh, uh, no, a, a failure or something like that. Mm -hmm. But it's it's all, always nice to be, uh, be up on stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And one of the other things that we talked about that I want to I wanna hit on, um, Jerry mentioned ARRL. There's a bunch of places you can go that give free ham exams you can take the exam a million times it doesn't count it doesn't give you your license if you pass they're just for practice i highly highly recommend you start taking practice exams when you get into the, you know, 80% 80, 80 level, 90% level of, hey, every time I take an exam, I'm, I'm above 80%, above 90%, you are definitely ready to take your, to take your exam for real. Um, but the, the, our, like, like Bob said in the beginning, our purpose here is to not not give make you ham experts. Our our goal here is to get you to pass the test. <laughs> it's like um, like taking the written test uh, for your driver's license. Yeah, uh, you, 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 you got the license, but uh, you know, are, are you an experienced driver yet? No, you got to get a little uh, dirt on your uh, under your nails. Yeah, you really learn this hobby by doing it. Mm -hmm. That's how you really really learn this hobby you know um so um the arrl site for arrl.com you can just search for uh you know a, a practice practice exams um the one that i used because i didn't know the arl one exists but i still like it hamexam.org um, pretty easy to use. Be careful when you're using the exam. I remember when I was going for my, you know, when I was taking practices for my technician license way back then, I one day went into hamexam.org and pushed the button to take a test. And I'd taken a bunch and I was getting, yeah, I was, I was feeling really good about myself at this point. And all of a sudden, I don't know any of this stuff. <laughs> what the heck is this i don't i mean i literally knew none of these because i accidentally picked amateur extra exam yeah every you know the site will let you choose technician general or amateur extra you want to always make sure you're doing technician um but you can do them over and over and over and over and over and just get used to the questions. The questions are, are all going to be the same. Exactly what's in your book is the question that the, 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 you know, test is you're the uh, practice exam will give you the exact same questions, 
the exact same answers. They will switch the order A, B, C, or D. They're always four answers to each question. Um, they'll switch them up. A, B, C, D will move around when you take the practice, practice exams, but they'll the questions are exactly what's in the book and exactly what's going to be on the real test. Um, it just every time you take it, it's going to pull a different set from that pool of, I don't remember what the number is. What's the number of tests and uh, questions in the, in the whole pool, Bob? Four, uh, the oh, total number four, is 462. Yeah. Four, yeah. Okay. Uh, and yeah, and you're going to get 35 on that 462. Right. And so every time you take a practice exam, it's going back to that 435 and giving you a different 35 questions. So it will be different every time. But, you know, you don't know what you're getting on test day either. So you want to just keep going through them and keep hitting them all and just keep practicing. Yeah, we, we just got a, a new set of questions. Uh, question uh, booklets for the ARRL. So we got uh, something like 12 different varieties, 12 different orders. So uh, we could sit uh, two people next to each other, take the, uh, and uh, one will have uh, version one, the other one will have version 12. And uh, no, you can't copy off each other. <laughs> yep. <laughs> well, you can, but it won't do you any good. <laughs> yeah, it'll hurt you. <laughs> Someone's going to fail. <laughs> Okay. Well, so for next week, um, you know, if you haven't read chapter two yet, you, you should, but that's what we covered tonight. And then um, for next week, you know, it'd be good if you read chapter three. Um, chapter three is really interesting. And, uh, and Jerry will be presenting that. Okay. okay. Uh, here, here's, here's one thing as far as our philosophy goes. Uh, I've been quoted on this a lot. Uh, we cover an area of uh, stuff that you have to know that's a mile wide, but it's only an inch deep. You got to know a, a little bit about a lot of stuff. And uh, so when you uh, combine that, you know, the, the knowledge, knowing a little about a, a lot of stuff, plus going over those uh, question pools, going over the uh, practice exams over and over. Uh, you're going to pass. You're going to have a little bit of knowledge, and you'll be able to ask questions of uh, more experienced people. And uh, we have the term Elmer. It's uh, in the first uh, chapter of the book. Uh, I guess uh, the fellow who coined that, his uh, first mentor was named Elmer. And uh, we are all Elmers. And uh, the whole club ha has a program of uh, Elmers. Uh, anytime you come to our club, ask a question and uh, you, you'll get all sorts of answers. Uh, it's different answers, you know, uh, uh, two hams, uh, what, 16 opinions, <laughs> something like that, but we'll, we'll help you along. Okay. Well, that's it for tonight. So um, we'll see you next time. I, I usually, uh, I'm usually signed on 15 minutes at a time. I wasn't tonight, but I usually am. So uh, and we can use that time if, if you have any any questions or anything you want to talk about uh, before class, we can do it that time also. OK, so yep. Bob, do you I'll, need more? Do you need more information from Terry? I don't know what kind of records we keep for our students. Uh, you know what? I, I, I know you told me you sent me a, an email about her. Uh, yeah, I, I just cc'd you on the email that I sent to her so will with I, will, this link. Okay, will I have, uh, will that have her uh, um, email? Her email address on it? Yep. Okay. And that normally we also collect phone number and, and address if you've got that, but um, but at least the, the, the email address so we can send her a link. And uh, incidentally, uh, anyone who takes our class, our technician class, or passes the technician exam at uh, any of our uh, test sessions gets a uh, free one-year membership to our club. That's a $30 value. All right. <laughs> I didn't know that. That's pretty cool. 
Yeah. yeah. So, so you serve members. Not only are you going to get free uh, uh, club membership, but you're getting a free handheld um, radio, too. Mm. Because uh -huh. Warren Cert's giving you that as, as a member of Warren Cert. Really? Huh. Yeah. Hey, that's the deal. Okay, uh, Chris has asked the question, will the recordings be shared? Yeah, it, it sometimes takes us several days to get the recordings out on on our YouTube site. Actually, it's Jerry's YouTube site. But yeah. um, it's, Bob, we're, we're going to have to do something uh, because uh, uh, you didn't let me uh, rec didn't uh, click the right switch. So I didn't record it. So I'll, I'll have to get uh, the recording from you. Oh, Okay. Yeah, you record. You recorded. I I saw it uh, go. Yep. 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 So uh, you'll have to get that over to me, and I'll uh, convert it and put it on the uh, Jerry's W nine NPI YouTube channel, and uh, it'll be there. Okay. All right, everyone. So hope to see you next week. All right. Good to meet you. Nice to meet you. Here, guys. Have a good night. Have a good night. Face.